Hello, this is Gene. Uh, it's been a long time since I've talked to you. Uh, a lot of things have gone on in the world uh, around here, uh, but I did want to get my uh, opinion out there. Um, first, I want to say thank you to, I think I have like one, you know, 111 subscribers now, which is uh, pretty shocking to me because I don't really post too much. But at least somebody is out there is listening to me, whether they believe me or uh, support uh, what I actually believe is really uh, immaterial. It's the fact that they're actually have the ability to, um, sp you know, subscribe to me. Uh, that means a lot to me. Um, it's nice that somebody is actually listening to what I have to say, uh, even though sometimes I have a hard time um, being able to say what I need to say. So uh, what I want to talk about today is uh, what is actually going on. Um, a lot of people consider what Trump uh, doing is a populist, uh, nationalist type of movement. And while I might agree with that um, on its face, I think it's more of a American um, type of movement, uh, Americanism type of thing. And let me explain. Uh, you all know that's going on in Europe right now, and they're getting, uh, I'm not going to say they're getting run over by Muslims or immigrants uh, from Syria, but it's obviously it's infecting them, infecting me, that's an interesting word impacting them very uh, negatively. Now, it's just not starting now. It's been going on for a while. Uh, if you go to London, uh, the, the town is almost half uh, Muslim, and there's areas that you can't go to if you're not part of the faith. And they will beat you up, sometimes do things to you even worse than that. They have their own type of laws there. So when people who actually might come from the more of the white power or white nationalist movement start talking about this, they are decried as being racist for doing it. Although, as we know, that Muslim, being a Muslim is not a race. You can be a Muslim if you're white, if you're black, if you're Chinese, if you're um, a South Pacific person. Uh, it's an ideology like any other religion is. Um, so you can't really say that they're racist. However, we know what's happened before when nationalist types of movements have taken power in Italy and in Germany uh, more recently. Um, so there is a cause to people to be concerned about this type of movement. Uh, and I will say that I listen to a lot of people that I would, what I would frame as being part of a European white movement. Um, and I can't put myself in their position because I live here in the United States where we are a diverse type of uh, country. Uh, we have taken in almost everything and, and most people have assimilated into our country. So, um, we're a little bit different type of uh, animal than it is in Europe. Uh, but I understand where they're coming from and it's unfortunate that they have to be the ones that have to, uh, call it out. Now what happens is, is people like uh, UKIP, which is the uh, UK Independent Party, gets lumped into people that are nationalists or Nazis at heart. And uh, UKIP isn't anything like that. And it, it's we get that here uh, for the people on the right. Um, some of the people on the left continually, continually, continue, continually uh, compare them to Nazis. Now. On its face value, that's just a stupid um, assertion. And the fact that I come from the left, that I was been a Democrat all my life, um, it's another reason why that I'm uh, it, it, that the left has just uh, lost me because of what they've done, and this is one of the areas that it's done. So uh, in Europe, somebody you can understand why they're upset. Um, it's they're right there. They're on the. I hate to say it. They're on a. Um, they're on the front lines of a, a war that needs to be fought. And so I saluted when Brexit happened. Uh, I think that that was the right thing for you uh, for UK to go through. Um, and there are going to be other uh, European nations that are going to do the same thing, and I support them from doing as well. Uh, there should be no central um, office building in a small country that decides for everybody in Europe. Uh, you know, if you want to be free, you go down that way. You have, 
you have votes and you decide what you're going to do with it. Sometimes the mob is wrong. Um, sometimes we have to stand, step up and say that they were wrong. Uh, I would say in this country that it's very possible that in the South, I'm not going to say anymore, but for a long time, uh, if there was, if it was set up to the states, the states probably will would have been a long time before they got get rid of a lot of the um, laws or stuff that oppressed uh, the blacks. Uh, so um, the federal government was necessary at that time. Uh, the Supreme Court was it necessary at that time uh, to get get us past that. Um, so when I started this whole thing, and like I said, it's been a while, and there's a lot of things that's going on. Um, the the media in this country, and obviously in Europe, especially in England, are very uh, orientated to the to the left, and not just the left, the far left. Uh, they basically uh, explain around anything that somebody who's on the left does. And every day when I go on, now I'm not. You know, this is some. I'm just some guy that sits there and looks online, and everywhere I go, everything is so anti-Trump. And it, what, the only time they talk about Clinton, if it, unless it's in a positive light, and then they make excuses for her when things go wrong. Uh, I mean, every time I go and pull up my iPad, which I'm recording this on right now, and I'm on Facebook or anything like that. Actually, I think it's on the first part of the iPad, and if you Swipe to the left, to the right, you get your news, and there's always something in the, in the negative of Trump. Now, yeah, he's a flawed candidate. Candidate, I've said it to uh, openly uh, on Facebook. I've talked about it, but when he talk about, he makes say he may so say something in speech that might offend somebody. Somehow that that sometimes uh, compares to what uh, Hillary did when it comes to emails or some of the other scandals that she's had in her life. Uh, I'm not saying all scandals were true and factual, um, because the right has their own uh, proper, proper, proper wing, uh, at Fox News, and some of the uh, the conservative right radio uh, talks about it. But Fox News is becoming more mainstream now. It's strange, uh, but that's fine. I mean, they can do what they want to do. All they're trying to do is make money, and they they think right now to be more main mainstream is probably making them more money. So, so it's, uh, in, in England, it's just crazy. I mean, the Daily Mail, the Guardian, Guardian uh, BBC are so leftist. Uh, they take feminist, feminist theory as, as truth, and they have people on there defending that. And then when somebody comes on there and just gives them facts, they just, they just die from it. And they just can't believe that somebody's coming on there saying that, you know, what, what they're thinking is bullshit. So... In England and in, in Europe, their uh, problems are much more uh, uh, in their face. And uh, so, as as somebody that I like to look at everything, I, I will look at these type of channels and their articles to see what they have to say. Now, some, I mean, I, I'm one of those people that believes this. And I think the greatness of the United States, and one of the things that people on the left have forgotten, is that we are a country that basically said uh, that we will take take you in uh, and we will uh, feed you and do all this type of thing and we're a compassionate country um, but all all Trump has been saying and I've had to defend him in my own house uh, even though I'm a Democrat and I voted for Obama twice and I voted Clinton and all that you know I did all this before but I had to def defend him because what he says is being taken out of context and he's not against all us Muslims he's talking about people that come here they're not here illegally or here illegally same thing with Mexicans. He's only talking about those that get here uh, illegally. And he thinks that we need to vet those that are coming from areas that, uh, that have a huge amount of um, sympathy for Liz, um, radical Islam. I think that that's a fair point. I think that's a, that's a fair type of thing. And I don't think there's really anything wrong with that. But the left, and unfortunately, even people not are, that you would know they're on the left. If you're watching MSNBC, you know they're on the left. So you know what you're going to get with that. But people we think that are even uh, at the same, you know, let's say not cons sensible type of people, uh, you know, some senators, some on both sides, that sit there and say that, no, he's talking about banning all Muslims, which he never said that. And yesterday he said something about the Second Amendment. And apparently 
everybody brought out there saying that that was saying hey, they should just kill Clinton. And people like forget what she did in, two, in 2008, 2008. And I will uh, link it below. When she many, many times talking about uh, that she's not going to drop out, that her husband didn't get the, job, uh, didn't get the nomination until late June. And she even talked, to, she, and after that she talks about when Bobby Kennedy got uh, assassinated. And she did this over and over again. Then I think she got, she realized that she shouldn't have been saying, shouldn't have been saying it, and then she did it again. And one of the most most left-leaning commentators at that time, Keith Ober, Oberman, took her to task, and that's what I'll leave below. Um, as much as everything he says in there, for the most part, I agree with when it comes to Clinton, uh, you know, he has issues as well. But the fact that there was someone on the left that actually would call people out, and we don't have that anymore, and I wish that Keith would be one of those people that would come out and call her out. Because what we know now, just from the movie uh, Clinton Cash, that we know that, that she has got her tentacles into everything, that she's out there just to make more and more money for her brand, and to make more and more money for herself. And any other person, any other organization, if they had this type of return when it comes to what they get uh, from their charity, um, they would be on blast on everybody. Uh, if it was a, a known place, like let's say Red Cross was only getting like 10% of what they got in and put it into charity, they'd be on blast for everybody and they would just be under so much scrutiny. Well, this is what the Clinton Foundation is. Their 10% of what they come in is used for charity. And even then, you could look at that, it's not necessarily that much. So the, Bill and Clinton and Hillary has made had, re, had figured out a way to make a lot more money. Now... If somebody's that stupid enough to give that much money, that's one thing. But when she basically uses her position as a secretary of state and where she's getting money from these people and all of a sudden they get um, free access to uh, mineral, right, mineral rights or oil rights in these countries, you know something's going on here. And nobody on the left will talk about it. And it's unfortunate. Some of the, some of the Sanders people will, but... Before I uh, move on, I, I want to talk about uh, Barry, Bernie Sanders. Um, I knew all along that uh, her his support was was fleeting. Let's put it that way. Once you cut him a little bit, that all that support would go somewhere else. And yeah, there was some out there uh, marching and protesting, um, but they should have known all along that uh, Sanders was not a type of uh, person that you could account at the end. His revolution is never was never thinking about that at all. He knew he, he knew he wasn't going to win, but either way, he had a chance to do something. He didn't do anything. Now, I don't believe in his vision of the future. I think that he's so leftist that uh, it, it would damage the country, um, and he has no spine. Um, and we could talk about, well, he just basically sat down when those black girls got up there and took the mic from him. Um, obviously he could never, he should not be the president. So, uh, I, I'm rambling here, but let me just, let me come back to the, the American, the Americanism thing. When I see things, uh, when somebody from this country who was born here or is naturalized, but they're citizens of this country and they use the victim complex to say that they are fearful of their life because of how they look or because they're a Muslim. And when somebody has a platform like the girl uh, at the Olympics, who's a fencer, said that she wrote it everywhere, that she's fearful to walk in the streets in, in the United States because she has an, a, a job on. And I just want to tell her this. Now, she'll never get this, but I don't care. You, <laughs> it is so strange that you, uh, as a female, who is the most corrected class in, in the United States, Ha get less assaults, get killed less. Um, people of your age group um, background does not get killed. Uh, compared to me, uh, I probably have a, a ten times more uh, uh, results that I'll have an uh, assault happen to me or I'll get killed. My friend's uh, friend, Devin, who lives down the street, he's a young, uh, young Af African-American who's uh, 17 now, I think. He's probably, uh, compared to me, he's probably ten times or a hundred times worse than something that would happen to me at my age and my uh, dr racial demographic uh, compared to his and his age and his racial demographic. And you go up there and say that you are fearful when you walk down the streets in the United States? Are you fucking kidding me? This shit needs to stop. 
and people, when, when somebody is interviewing this person and they say something like that, either you needed to stop the interview and say, do you really want this to go out there and say that this is what you're worried about? Because you think that everybody in the United States are so against people who are Muslims. We don't really give a shit about the religion that you're doing. What we care about is if there's somebody that's coming from those areas that we can't vet, that we want to wait, that we don't make sure before we bring them in. And if you're an, an, a citizen like several of these people that did it, like the guy in Orlando who was a citizen, we have to deal with that as a country and say, well, that's we, we need to look at how do we give it, um, our uh, citizens uh, their rights like that. Or maybe we say we don't want anybody to come from that those areas. Um, but I'm not somebody that's going to say that I would want to have a search everywhere and, and everybody have cameras everywhere. Uh, and I know that the the actual threat of terrorism in this country is low. Uh, there is a lot more uh, threat to Devin walking down the street uh, in certain areas just because he's a young black man than or me walking around somewhere because I'm a white guy in a song area uh, compared to this young girl who comes from privilege, who is a fencer for, for God's sakes. Obviously, that's a huge amount of money to play on it. I don't even have to look at where their, her parents come from. Clearly, she came from a, a well-to-do family. Uh, and she has this nerve to say in this country that she feels fearful. Why don't you go to where Muslim is the predominant religion and ask yourself the same thing? Say, uh, well, I'm going to walk around here and I'm going to in the town square and I just want to have something to eat. And then somebody might come in there and blow up the area because we know that 99% of those who are getting killed by Muslims or other, or other Muslims or radical Islamists that are blowing themselves up. They do it in neighborhoods that are predominantly Muslim. And you come and say that in this country you are fearful? Are you kidding me? Why, because you're a woman of color? Or because you're a Muslim? You've got to be fucking kidding me. This country is so progressive, so aggressively changed so much over the years. And when people say shit like this and has no reason to say it, and people like Black Lives Matter sit there and sit there and say that only that, that there's a white supremacist movement that's out to kill black men, that's just bullshit because you're killing each other every fucking day. Why don't we have this conversation instead of just, just sitting there having this little, this, uh, Tit to tat, saying, "Oh, it's your fault or your fault." It's but it's all our fault. Let's have this conversation. Let's talk about single mothers in in black communities. Let's talk about it in the white communities. But what I want to talk about this is that Americanism, and it's hard for me to say because of my my issues. Is it once you become in this country and you become a citizen of this country, we do not care what color you are, but we do expect that you are an American, um, and they sh you should support the fact you're American. And if, they, if we think there's a, there's a threat, because there are black people that talk about the threat from Muslims, there are people who are Hispanic or Latino that says they're going to vote for Trump because they don't want the illegals to come over the border and take their jobs or have a, a threat in their community. Uh, this, is not, this is not racism. This is not, uh, uh, I don't know, whatever it is. It's not. These are people who are citizens that got here legally, and even those that, some that haven't, that, that made a great life for themselves, but they know what they probably shouldn't have did what they did. I, this is not something that should be really a debate, because the left, the Democrats have, talking about, have been talking about reforming immigration forever. But I know, after I've really searched this, they want them to come through and them all to get become citizens so they'll become part of their voting block. And that's unfortunate. And they've done it in the black community as well. And I'm not saying it was a purposeful thing, but it certainly worked out for them. They're going to get 80 to 90 percent of the black community. They're going to get 70 or 80 percent of the Latino or the Hispanic community in the national election. And unfortunately for them, even though I'm a Democrat and I've been voting that way forever, uh, this is why they do this and why they change the laws to do this. And it's unfortunate. Uh, but this idea that we can't stand up and say, we want America to be great again. Now, I'm one of those people that believe that we've always been great, but we can do better. And uh, there's nothing wrong to be proud to be an American. And yesterday, I'm not saying this, is, this actually happened or this is her intention, but one of the girls on the gym, gymnastics team, they just won the gold, 
All the girls are sitting up there when the national anthem is going on with their heart over their hand over their heart, and she's sitting there with her hands down and her her feet kind of away from each other. And she got called out, and of course everybody was defending her because uh, that's what we do. We always defend women in this country whenever what they do. We just forget about it. And then she said, "Well, I'm you know apparently her parents are um, that lived in the mil or were military guys, and she said she always stands at attention when the when the national anthem is, is done. Uh, oh, that's true. Uh, you know, I'm a military guy. You do that. But she wasn't doing that. She had one foot in front of another, and she just sat there like she was not uh, slouched over. So I don't know. Maybe in the back of her mind, she's one that supports Black Lives Matter. I don't know, and I don't really give a shit about it. But and we can have these conversations. But let's be true here. Let's let's look at the facts. Let's look at the, uh, the stats, uh, crime stats, and let's see what's happened since... Uh, Big Daddy cover it came into uh, the black community and became the father in the black community and what's happened to that black community and how it's happened to the white community as well. It's actually it's happened in the black community too. Uh, we don't talk about it much, but certainly around uh, in the mid Midwest around uh, the Appalachians, it's done the same thing. And these guys are doing the same shit that guys at different colors do it as well. So there's nothing racist or uh, nationalistic or or a Nazi and saying, I'm American, and I support being American, and I, I support having jobs here for Americans. Um, we don't have to support the entire world. Now, before I leave, I just want to say this. We still are the greatest country in the world, and I'm going to tell you why. We still give more money than anybody combined to support people when tragedy happens. Yes, we can sit there and we can look at our history and say that some of those tragedies were bossed or brought on because of us. Uh, obviously, uh, the rise of ISIS is probably related to uh, uh, Clinton and Bush. Okay, it, it probably is. But I'm talking about when shit happens, we're there all the time. We don't care who you believe, uh, what side you're on. Uh, we come and we support you, and we do that. And when something like a Haiti happens or something like that, the heart of the American people are just un unbounded. We will do whatever we can to help people. As Kennedy talked about in the, in the 60s, he, he talked about that we will listen, that we'll be, for, we'll be there to help you. Uh, we will never turn our way from you. And that's what made me a Democrat and a, 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 a classical liberal, meaning that I don't believe that the government should be in charge of everything, that I believe in the individual. And as to get at together, all individuals doing well will, every, will help the entire collective. Now, I'm not a, that's what leftists just believe, you know, the collective together. I believe in the, the individual, and we've lost that on the left. We've, <laughs> I can't even find myself on the left anymore. So um, when Trump says he wants to make uh, America great again, I think we already are. The fact is that the potential for us to be the greatest of ever, of all time, is still there. And uh, so at this point, <laughs> I will not be voting for Clinton. So that's all I have to say about that. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, I know it was a long time, and it's been a long time since so I've been out there. So uh, if you have anything uh, you want to talk about or anything I want to talk about in the future, just let me know, and I'll try to talk about it. As I said, I don't strip anything. Uh, I only do as well as my brain will let me. Um, I'm sure I left things out. Uh, but this is what I was thinking about the last couple of years, or <laughs> um, weeks and months, because uh, that's how it is. Uh, there's so much out there, and maybe I'll go and talk about them uh, more um point by point than just rambling along like you did here. But thanks for watching, and again, thank you for those who are still subscribing to me. Uh, that hurts me, or hurts me. It makes me feel really good that somebody's actually listening to what I have to say. You guys have a good day. Bye.